Hey there, back with my old views and mods, and today I'm continuing the series on the excellent Gun Marks of the Old World by Hate Criminal. It's continual work updated the mod, which the Mao of America started. As I did in the first video, I'm using Mixu's Onyoka version of this mod. At cast time, some of the videos you will see in the background at the moment are some of the settlements I covered while I completed my GCSM series, about the excellent maps they have created. There'll be a link in the top right corner if you want to see more of that series. So today we are covering Bretonian Yans and the Southern Realms. The Rodos, however, have not had any new Yan marks. As before, I will cover a rough cost of each building, returns it takes to complete, and for what tier ever it is. So let's start in the north of Bretonia. On the Bretonian north coast, the city of Eliangau sits and was formerly known as Toyasa in the War of the Beard. This is where the High Elves were settled. They left this place, due to the obvious War of the Dwarfs, and some of the buildings still stand today. One of these is this Yite House. The Yite House itself costs 5,000 gold to build and is available to all factions, except Green Skins and the Skaven. It takes four turns to build and a tier 3 settlement. A nice building for the price and gives you a nice boost with the ever freaky high elves. Also provides a decent bit of income and trade. Speaking of the income, as you can see in the A to DLC for the Red Elves and Skaven, CA has added some percentage bonus to the base level. So you can see the percentage increase you get depends on your faction and your choices. Anyway, back to the Ite House. A bit of extra movement and some nice trade. Another 100% increase in campaign line of sight from all your armies, which really helps spot raiding parties nice and early. As we move further down the coast, UNA is where we come to, and the capital of the province, and to this landmark, the Feast Hall. A great place to entertain your guests and provide some lucrative trade to the province. A Petonian only building, which costs 6,200, four turns to build, and a tier 4 settlement. As you can see, this building is really powerful too and need diplomacy, something I hope to ex see expanded in Warhammer 3. With bonuses across the board and there's some nice trade resources as well, with wine. And a bonus to trade on the whole at a large 18%. With a small income bonus and a recruitment rank of plus 1, which can easily stack with your other bonuses. Also adds a couple of good infantry units, the foot squires and the powered into the garrison. And most welcome they are as well. Staying in UNA, we also have an exclusive high elf building, Afa Maniar, a small colony which was settled by some high elves, claiming this to be a high, old high elf settlement. The Petonian Yord at the time, Francis Uenoir, outraged at this swite, refused the ambassador, and a tournament was had to settle this. The elf won against the Yord's son, who was disgraced. The duke allowed the high elves to stay, until if later he found out that the, the answer that was used was magical, so he declared war on the colony. The war was settled at a stalemate, and the High Elves were greatly impressed with their enemy, giving the Bretonian Yord an enchanted weapon. This landmark naturally is only available to hate High Elves, and some really nice bonuses, and they also growth. Income for buildings, and a lot of siege bonuses as well, and a nice increase of the garrison with two nobles and a mage. Not bad for 5,922 gold, 5 turns of building, and a tier 3 Mian mark. Moving on to the undead Mission city. However, if you can take this back from them, there is a mark to be had by some factions. First you have Merovex Museum, a hero of Bretonia who became a monster. It started off so well for him, as he had the Bretonian pur to purge the Skaven from the Hisians, but slowly his beauty dust and grief for power made him follow the darker arts. It came to a head at a great feast, which was provided by the local duke. However, the food was brought out by the undead. Furious, the king who had been invited, challenged Maravec to combat, and a bloody fight was, in, was had, which ended with Maravec tearing out the Lord's throat and drinking his blood. He was shunned, and of course hunted and killed for his actions. However, they decided to create a burial place in his honour, and this Yamark is available to Petonia only costing 6,600 gold, and takes 5 turns of building, and is a tier 3. Obviously a great yarn mark if you've got a rat problem. Adding some nice buffs, and they offer untainted to get rid of that stench of a skaven out of your yarns. However, if you take this place as empire, you get a different choice. The Oak of Prophecy, a multi-tier settlement. A rare bit of healthy yarn in a place brighted by the undead. It's a simple stone circle, 
sacred to Tao and Waya, and needs constant attention by those priests to keep the undead stain coming in to a sacred part of the museum. So the first level is the circle itself, adding a nice bit of growth and public order. Coming in at 3,555 cost, taking only two turns to build and a tier 2 building. At the next stage, add even more growth, public order, and untainted, and research rate as a bonus. With a substantial income boost as well, makes it a viable landmark, costing a further 5,000 gold, four turns and a tier 3 building. Before we even proceed on, one more young mark to talk about. And everybody's favourite rap people have got their own under Mission. This young mark provides a lot of gold and a ridiculous amount of bonuses for the Crown Pestians. Upkeep for pray, pray monks and pray core catapults they like. Raccoon costs cheaper as well. Nice weapon strength from pray monks. Nice, a lot of scathing and corruption for various regions around Mission. And it provides a, a very strong garrison of a Prague Core Catapult and a Prague Monk Sensor Bearer. And just to just to make sure, two more units of Prague Monks. And there was a recruitment of those Sensor Bearers and the Prague Monks themselves. A particularly powerful building for 13,131 cost. Bit too many 13s there. Bit spooky. Eight turns and it's a tier 3 settlement. Moving east now and Castle Artois on the first Port of Call on the Anmark is Sigmar's Haim, a small empire outpost came about from a Bretonian knight Elwand who made many friends in the empire. He brought them back and they set up in the forest and built a small village around the temple of Sigmar. It is a rare old bastion for the empire where Rax Spiel is still the language of choice. This Janmark, being open to the empire and Bretonia, is cheap at 3500, takes 3 turns to make and is only a tier 2 building. Adds a nice control around the area and similar for the Empire version as well, with some good relations with the said Empire. And the battery needed untainted to keep the nearby vampires at bay. Topped off with some swordsmen and handgunners to help defend your chosen faction. Before we move on, we also have a trophy hall to talk about. A monument to the Bretonian purge of the undead and the beastmen of Shroud and Siand. Here, this building gives you some great bonuses to fight in these factions as well as a diplomatic yoss with the said factions, but more than likely you'd be fighting these anyway. Now we can move further east, into the valley which goes between the northern mountains and heads into the lands of the empire, and a major seaport of Meyenberg. Here we find the trader district, a hub for all types of trade, and you can provide a lot of money for your faction. For its cost of 9,750, taking 5 turns to build, and a tier 3 building, this provides a lot of trade goods, and it's worth every penny, with a bit of gold at face file, as well as bonuses to various trades. This yard mark can easily make you money back, just make sure you got a lot of trade routes in place. Now we move into the region of Bordeaux, and to the capital to check out the first yard mark of this area. Which happens to be the first chapel, and it's one of the holiest sites of Petonia. Which let's face it, is saying something as they do like a holy site. This being the first Grail Chapel, and a must stop for any night. Costing a hefty 12,000 gold, and taking 6 turns to build, and as a tier 4 settlement. It's all about the Grail Knights, as you might expect. Bus for all, we take the Grail Vow, and a plus 10 to all cavalry across the faction on the charge, which is a huge boost. And the recruitment ranks, the heroes and the ords they like, is a strong landmark, and while it costs quite a lot of money, it does provide a good garrison boost, with two units of Grail Knights and a Paladin and a Damsel to boot, to help protect this holy site. Moving in the end, we come to Aquain and our next landmark, the Ace Tower. The landmark is famous throughout the Shand and is sacred to Damsels around Bretonia. A tower with walls that seem to be made completely of windows, to make it look like Ace. Nobody's entered it for 50 years, and even you know it, it's 10 the ashes of the whip, no matter who you are, which the Duke's daughter found out to her cost. A really strong landmark to help you damsels in magic, with good recruitment rank bonus of plus 3 and adding more capacity as well. It also provides a sneaky unique trade resource, even though it has limited numbers, and it costs 5,500 gold, 4 turns of building and a tier 3 level. It's a useful building, especially if you need the damsels help in your holy crusades. Moving on to Boston now, and here we are at the old castle, 
a yard mark, which is well worth it, considering its initial cost. This was considered Gaiwi of Breton's personal residence, a place where most nobles are not allowed to enter, and peasants are whipped for even looking at the sacred place. As you might have guessed, this sacred yard mark has got going for it. At 11,000 gold, 8 turns to build, and naturally, it's a tier 5 yard mark. This is the youngest of buffs for characters and armies alike, with the largest chivalry of all the buildings so far, and a nice bit of control as well. But it's like Garrison and the Oko Kuman bus which really set it apart, adding 3 more swaps to the Oko Kumans and a really powerful Garrison. However, if you happen to have a young tail, an Akri, and you have some tasty warp stone, how about building the exclusive Skaven Obi building, Black Chasm? In the mountains around Baston, it's a secret underground area, which has been a constant source of fighting for the Quans. Currently, Quan Eshin hold it, even though Quan Pestians believe it's theirs. As you can see, it's a haven for assassins. And there's lots of bonuses for recruitment as well. As it takes an entire page to fit it, fit it in a win. Highlights for me are the recruitment rank of 6 for assassins and capacity increases as well. Also provides some great scheme corruption and viable trade in warpstone chests. As well as the ability to recruit Crown Eshin units, this is a very nice garrison. Boost as well, with two death runners and a very which are very high tier scaven units. Moving on to the province of Parvon now, and into Quenelles. Here we find our next Yan Mark, an ancient burial site marking a battle between knights and greenskins. Now the undead have claimed this sizable site, which is said to be a Yarja's town. But this cannot be confirmed, as any who has come close have been chased off by the undead who now guard this place. This Yan Mark is not as impressive as some of the others, but it's still quite expensive at 6,000 dark magic. Five turns to build, and it's a tier 3 building. And as you might have guessed, this is up for only Vampire Counts unit factions. With some nice bonuses to Black Knights, as well as very good bonus to the Garrison. It means not an essential landmark to build here, but can definitely help with a defence or spread of corruption. Moving into a new region now, and the massive Oscal. We have a green screen exclusive built landmark for Tunnel Network. One of the rare areas of Petonia, which is not Yushin Farmyand, and here we find the green skin settlement. And to help them settle in the mountains, they've built this large tunnel network. For 2,800 gold, well, teeth, two turns to build, and a tier 2 level, this provides a ton of great buffs if you plan to settle the area around you. With great reverse bonus throughout this land, some growth and cheaper construction costs, and a nice increase in sacking settlements around the area. As it is right in the middle of Gretonia, this gives you a great place to start off your armies. Also adds some nice units to the garrison as well as a bonus. Let us move back into the much nicer area of Bretonia and the arse region we show you at. First, we can visit the coastal town of Brion and the whole of Winstrals. They are marked, which brings entertainers from around the world to perform. With perfect acoustic sound and a spectacular circle, circle building made of white stone. Greatest place to see artists perform. It's not a massive impressive Jan Mark card, but at 6,000 gold, taking only 4 turns to build, and as a tier 3 settlement, does provide a ton of control or public order bonuses in the region. Also, the income is welcome, and a recruitment rank bonus is always useful to start off your new yard. The Arsery from Bretonia is Carousel. Particularly Jan Mark, the mustering fields is a large area to train troops to the high standards the region expects. It's a great choice for building if you want to start mustering your armies in this region. As you can see, this yard map provides a lot of recruitment for infantry in one building, now you not to bother with the expensive training field chain. As this costs 6,000 gold, takes 4 turns to build, and is a tier 3 settlement. This high initial cost saves you around 5,000 gold in the long term to recruit these troops, as well as increasing the recruitment capacity and the 10% reduction in upkeep, which is substantial across your faction. As we move away from the fair yands of Petonia, we can go south down the coast and into the southern realms from the second part of the yand marks we shall cover today. Here is Babaul, and we have our, f our first yand mark here, the Bell Tower. The striking tower on a small island in the bay provides the local populace with warnings of incoming fleets or as a guide for sailors to bring their ships in during storms. While this yand mark has only a few bonuses, they are important, like 5,000 cost, taking 5 turns to build, and only tier 3 settlement. This yard mark is open to all factions except for the greenskins, 
and the ranger scouting is definitely the highlight of this yam mark. You need to keep an eye on the high elves or any pirates around your yams. Moving south again, we head to Margarita and the vampire only yam mark Knights of Orana. A once noble order of knights coming out of Asteria, the Grand Master decided to follow Abrash, the legendary leader of the Blood Dragons, and turned his order to follow the mighty vampire and his Blood Knight tradition. As you can see, this building comes at a high cost. The 11,700 Dark Magic taking a huge 10 turns to build and it's a tier 5 building. It provides buffs for the Blood Knights and a great trade resource as well. And brings 3 elite Blood Knights to the garrison, so a vital hard to enforce to protect your settlement should they get into the walls. Moving east now, on the R settlement of Tyria, is Tabarro. Here we come across an empire exclusive landmark, the Catacombs. Before the empire settled here, it was one of the high elf settlements, and some of the landmarks still survive today. The Catacombs dug out by the former owners provide some nice bonuses. A much needed boost, making it a walled settlement, and some nice boost to fighting the Skaven as well. Being that Skaven Bright is just around the corner, this is badly needed. Adding to the garrison with some very powerful units makes this an important yam mark at 4,400 gold, 4 turns to build and a tier 3 settlement. We can stay in Tabal, and this time we've got a Skaven exclusive building, the Spine Port. The industrious Skaven have built another harbour here, nearby to the main harbour, luring in trade ships into the crutches of the Ratmen to steal their goods and turn out a very nice profit. As you can see, for your 6,013 gold, I'm waiting 4 turns, and that tier 3 level, tier three level you get some really interesting bonuses, especially when it comes to trade, and a boost of Skaven Bright as well, with some gold. Add to that a really strong garrison, increased with some Death Runners and, and the units of Sturm Vermin. Moving even more east now, and we shall speed past Skaven Bright, and we come to Mergliano of Tyria, which is a unique building for the Empire. The Chapel of Marne is the second largest in the world to the God of the Sea and some royal priests to attend to the temple with traditional zeal. Naturally, adding some nice bonuses to the naval movement and removing attrition to anyone to get into trouble on the high seas. Add to that, two priests to the garrison and a strong untainted bonus, and public order means it's well worth the 8,000 gold investment, five turns it takes to build, and it's a tier 4 landmark. Moving south down the coast, we come to the Aquia Academy, dedicated to the art of war and teaching it to anyone who attends. This is one of three academies spread out around the world. world. The others being at Noon and Carousel. This one, however, is all about knights and has grown very powerful over the years, and there has been a fierce rivalry between these three academies. As you can see, this card is very large and adds so many different buffs to the settlement for its 10,000 cost. It takes a while to build, at 8 turns, and it's only a tier 3 building. I must build in this area as it's a great, great, great starting place to muster an army, having recruitment bonuses and allowing the recruitment of yachts of solid infantry as well as providing a particularly strong garrison, which can man the worlds this Jan Mark provides. We can leave Tyria now, and go around the Cape and go into the Border Princes. And we start off the capital of the Western Border Princes, and this Jan Mark, the Merchant Quarter. Now just are all the Border Princes cities, and situated right at the entrance of the Gulf. This has a huge natural port, allowing a yacht trade to come through this area. As you can see, this Jan Mark provides yacht trade resources, as well as 400 gold a turn. For the initial price of 7,000 gold, it takes 7 turns to build and it's a tier 4 building. Adding these trade resources and boost the casualty replenishment and substantial bonuses to trade, this yam mark can quickly pay its initial cost back. Staying in the Western Border Princes, we have another yam mark which is available to all, and we also have a unique one of the green skins which I'll show after this one. The Grand Stone Masonry is mined and provides all around. Excellent uses for the Empire. As it's highly sought after for its marble and granite, which is uniquely beautiful and highly sought after. As you can see, this provides a huge amount of rare trade resources and is reasonably priced at only 5,300 gold, 4 turns to build it, and a tier 3 building. Another building that can pay for itself, especially as it makes building cheaper across your entire faction. The green skin variants, however, provides a huge income value due to the huge, highly popular use of the marble and granite to the favourite weapons of choice, the chopper. Also making the savage orcs cheaper and even more powerful. As you may have guessed, the green skins have to pay a bit for this yam mark at 8,450, 
and taking four turns to build it, and it's a tier 3 settlement as always. And let's face it, that's a lot of teeth for the green skins to give up. As we go further up the coast, we head to the eastern border provinces, and we find Matorka, which has a unique building for the Vampire Celts and Arcane Lebrac. This landmark is ancient barrels from a young forgotten people. However, some excelled Knocking Mountains found them and have settled in the region to raise them. A sacred site for the vampires and gives them a lot of bonuses. They are under the recruitment of Graveguard and White Kings as well, and increased growth and a lot of vampire corruption around this region. Even better, it has a nice recruitment rank bonus to any infantry mustered here. And our last stop is Akendorf, where we have three young marks to talk about. And first up is a trade eag, an empire only building. The eag tried to control all the trade in the region by any means necessary, be it political, financial, or good old fashioned force of arms. This incredibly powerful eag now has influence in every part of the Akendorf area. As you can see, this young mark provides a lot of trade bonuses, and well as a good income increase from the off. A strong garrison to help enforce the streets, which is Jackie White has a large public order bonus as well. For these bonuses, you can imagine the price being steep, but at 8,000 gold, 7 turns to build, and as a top tier settlement, it's not, not an awful price to pay. Next landmark available to the Empire and the Elves is an ancient one, Torah and Arak. It's a tower which provides outstanding vis visibility of a surrounding area, but it's difficult to see from the outside. The card itself naturally provides a large bonus to scouting in the area at 100% in this region and surrounding areas, making it very powerful. There are bonuses from being under siege, boosting tower yield, and increasing the garrison as well, making this a great defensive building for the area. A cheap yam mark at only 4,500 gold, takes 4 turns to build, and is at a tier 4 level. The archery for Akendorf, the green skins get their own yam mark, uh, and the nearby fire forest is infested with spiders. Naturally, this is a forest goblin dream location, and provides a lot of bonuses to goblin spider riders and recruitment of them. With good growth as well, and increased movement. This is a powerful building, as well as providing a unique army ability for anybody in these arms. Excellent for slowing down the enemy. Coming in that expensive for a green bu skin building at 7,221, it only takes two, 4 turns to build, and a mid, a mid tier 3. Thanks for joining me on this tour of the marks of Bretonia and the Border Princes. Remember to check out the series, and I'll see you in my next video.